Good evening. Thanks so much for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Tim Pham. We begin with a developing situation in Spokane Valley. Crews put out a fire at the Fat Panda business, which is a marijuana grow operation. Thick, heavy black smoke could be seen coming from the second floor of the building when firefighters arrived. We asked if any plants caught fire and a spokesperson for the fire department could not confirm if they were affected. We do know, however, authorities evacuated 80 of the operations employees and cut off the building's gas line. Lines. At this hour, investigators have not said what caused the fire. Fat Panda is located near the intersection of Trent and Argonne. No traffic in that area was affected. To weather now, it was a little cloudy today, but meteorologist Michelle Bond says the weather is shaping up nicely for the last day of the Spokane Interstate Fair tomorrow. Michelle, are we going to see any more sunshine? Yeah, we're going to see a little bit more sunshine tomorrow. It was kind of a gray day today, though. Most folks stay dry here in the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area. As we take a look at satellite and radar, we are seeing a persistent area of showers generally north of Spokane, kind of zooming into that area. It runs from about Grand Coulee, Nespelum to Inchileum, Colville, and up to Ione. We're seeing rainfall amounts over the last 12 hours of anywhere from just a couple of hundredths to as much as about a tenth of an inch. That eventually is going to push northward, and precipitation will uh, push back towards the northwest. We're looking at some soggy weather tomorrow for places like Omak, Wenatchee, maybe even as far east as Colville and Moses Lake, but for places like Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, it's going to be a pretty nice day tomorrow with more sunshine than we saw today. We'll see those clouds clearing out overnight, looking at mostly sunny conditions tomorrow morning. Temperatures bottoming out in the middle 50s overnight and tomorrow, and then looking at highs in the mid 70s tomorrow with sunshine, but the rain will make its way into our area by Sunday night into Monday, looking for much cooler weather. Monday with a few showers, a high of only 60 degrees. Cool again on Tuesday with highs in the lower 60s. Michelle, thank you. Now to a developing story out of Seattle. Police released new surveillance footage that shows a suspect running from the scene of a shooting inside the Westlake station last night. You can see him running up the stairs with a gun in his hand. One person was killed and two others are in the hospital. One of the victims is in critical condition. Well, the search is on tonight for that person in the video. Here's what we know about the shooting. It happened around 930 last night. Witnesses say they saw the suspect pull a gun and began firing. Detectives do not believe the shooting was random. And as you can imagine, it was a chaotic scene as those gunshots rang out. And as I get down into the tunnel um, on the bottom escalators, there's a guy sitting there bleeding out from his leg. Um, and I was like, are you okay, bro? And he's like, no, don't go down there. There's a shooter. Um, I tried to, he had already tourniqueted it, it up. Um, and I saw that there were cops down there. So I ran down there, told them that there was another victim up here because I don't think they knew. And then like 30 cops with assault rifles came running up the stairs. And it was crazy. Well, in the video, the shooter is wearing a dark hoodie. Police, though, have not released an official description of the suspect. New tonight, a Western Washington High School is mourning the loss of a student whose body was found in the Green River near Auburn earlier this week. 16-year-old Juan Carlos Cone Guzman was a student at Mount Rainier High School. The King County Sheriff's Office is investigating his death as a homicide. Cone Guzman died of blunt and sharp force trauma. According to the King County Medical Examiner, no arrests have been made. Struggled at times at school, but we were always there and he fought back really hard and he was just a great young man and well liked across our campus. So the teen's father reported him missing early Tuesday morning. Several hours later, the King County Sheriff's Office Marine Unit and major crimes detectives responded to the Green River where the teen was found. His family has set up a GoFundMe page to help with funeral expenses. You can find that info on creme.com. An update now on the train derailment in DuPont, Washington. A jury awarded $17 million to three people hurt in the Amtrak crash that happened nearly two years ago. The train crashed during its inaugural run in December of 2017. Investigators determined it was going too fast around a curve when it crashed, killing three people and injuring more than 50 others. There are still 32 more lawsuits pending against Amtrak in federal court. Well, volunteers flooded High Bridge Park this morning for the Spokane River cleanup. This is actually the 16th year. Hundreds of volunteers helped pick up trash along the river. In tonight's Inland Northwest story, Krem 2's Brandon Jones tells us how people in our community are making a difference. So they are seriously dedicated out here. I just followed a group down some of the hills and through the brushes and bushes and all of that kind of stuff. But they're getting it taken care of. I mean, they've collected so much trash already and they're not done yet. 
Volunteers for the 16th annual Spokane River Cleanup were with all of the nitty gritty work. Hundreds of people met up at High Bridge Park for the yearly event and dedicated their morning to the environment, snacking any trash they could find. You wow. have to look into the shrubbery to find all the good stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Not okay. just on the path, you've got to go off of the path. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Many of the participants have been helping with the cleanup for years. Others are new to it, but the overall goal was to collect four whole tons of trash. And with a goal like that, you've got to get it by any means necessary even if that means getting into the river for the harder objects to collect. Things like tires, rusted metal, and glass bottles were found all over the place, and a good effort was put into separating recyclables from the trash. This is a great opportunity to come out and get involved with the community in hands-on, constructive things that, that really uh, make a difference. So we're out here uh, supporting this effort. Plenty of students were on the scene getting volunteer hours while having a good time. With each piece of trash picked up, the potential harm to surrounding wildlife decreases and places like High Bridge Park get a much-deserved break from pollution. In Spokane, I'm Brandon Jones, CREM2 News. Brandon, thank you. Well, a Thurston County Superior Court judge sanctioned Tim Iman for a more than $766,000 donation he received for ballot initiatives. A judge ruled that the money represents political contributions, not gifts from supporters, as Iman claimed. State Attorney General Bob Ferguson says Iman never reported those contributions. In a statement, Ferguson says this means that Tim Iman concealed more than $766,000 in campaign contributions. And the state can and will seek additional penalties for every day he fails to report them. Well, we hear it all the time from police slow down in school zones, watch out for pedestrians and put down your cell phone. This week they stopped warning drivers and started writing tickets. It was all a part of an emphasis patrol aimed at getting drivers to watch out for pedestrians. It is truly about safety and getting people to be more aware of pedestrians and what's going on around them. We're not trying to trap or trick anybody. And when people slow down and follow the rules, that's great. But as you'll see, as you sit here for a little while, even with all the, act, the police activity and with all the media activity, a lot of people are not paying attention. Pretty informative there. Well, officers and a few state troopers watched Sergeant Griffin cross 29th Avenue, as you see here, which is this area is near Rosars, and they did that for about two hours yesterday. And during that time, get this, they pulled over several vehicles and wrote about 30 citations. At least 10 of those citations were specifically for failing to yield to a pedestrian. The message, just follow the rules of the road and stop for all pedestrians. We'll still ahead tonight.